And what percentage of your revenue do you invest in? in, in Five percent. Five percent, which is about a billion. A billion and a half dollars. One point six billion dollars. Actually, we bought a company that changes that ratio a little bit, but in our core business, it's about one percent. Huge. John. Three things that, that come to mind that might surprise you. When I think about innovation, I think what we've learned to do very well at Cisco through trial and error and mistakes is innovate on three uh, axes at the same time. Internal innovation, including internal startups, acquisitions, we've done 140 of them, and about 70% have exceeded what we told our board of directors we do in industry where 90% fail, and strategic partnerships, which are really hard. I'd say innovation and thinking about it that way is key with an unbelievable sense of paranoia. If you're not the first five to market, you're not one of the first five to partner. Second thing is being customer driven through innovation. We all the time not just benchmark with GE or Xerox or Walmart. We say, what are we doing right? What do we have to do different? And they actually tell us what products to build and uh, how quickly we have to change. And innovation by finding ways to listen to your customers, I think is very key. It's why you see all three of us spend a lot of time with customers on it. The, probably the third axis I'd say on innovation uh, is an ability to just have a quick time to market mentality and an ability to dream and set aspirational goals. We changed our whole company and reorganized from command to control, which I love and reasonably good at doing, and learned from TV and Walmart how to do well, to it's all about social networking and collaborative groups and approaches. Now, while it's too early to say this is going to be the model for the world, for us, it allows us to take on 30 different fronts at the same time and actually getting working together. So innovation and everything from products to our attitude toward it doesn't just yourself, it's innovate, you innovate by using resources all the way around the world, to having the courage to change your organization even though it makes us uncomfortable, especially the leader, uncomfortable. That would, that would probably be three areas that we do reasonably well. So I'd give a couple ideas. Uh, the first one is we, we do about 6% of our industrial revenue back in R&D. Uh, more products and more price points. So, so basically, we look at the profit pools of all the businesses we're in, and we look at any uninhabited space as a place where we can innovate. So, so more technology, 30% more, more products in 2011 to 2010, and so on. Uh, the second thing we've done is reposition decisions globally so that we can do a better job of getting the best out of India, the best out of Turkey, the best out of Russia, the places we are, and we can do a better job of what we call reverse innovation and getting products around the world. Uh, the third thing is expanding the core. You know, we have a pipeline of 20 to 30 adjacencies that are opening up new turf for us. For a big company, you know, you, you can't stay pat. You have to constantly be, uh, be driving new businesses, new adjacencies. And then the last one, we've tried to position GE in some of the big solutions, clean energy, affordable health care. Big, I would say, you know, socially based, systems thinking type, you know, where innovation takes breadth and depth and things like that. So those are just a couple ideas I would share. Those are all very useful perspectives. Uh, let me pivot a little bit more. This show and indeed our association, 80% of the participants are small businesses. And the philosophy of the entire show, actually, based on our board is that anyone with an idea should be able to come here for a very small investment and expose it to people like yourself and the other 125,000 investors, retailers, and media. Um, how does someone, an entrepreneur with an idea, what's the best way to approach your individual companies? Is, are there things they should do right or are there things they shouldn't do? How do they break through the bureaucracy of the, what they view as a huge company to expose their idea to you? So we've got a lot of different ways. You know, the, the, one of the things that we've wanted to be known as is to be a really good partner. So we uh, open up uh, our research center frequently to venture startups, and either through big VC firms or in a broader community. But you know, Gary, one of the things we did last year was what we called a smart grid challenge, which is where we went online. We said, hey, here's the part of the smart grid where GE inhabits. Let the ideas flow. Uh, we set aside $200 million to co-invest, do licensing deals, things like that. Uh, we've committed $55 million so far. We've got 3,700 ideas. All of them get a response. We've invested in 20 so far. One of the things we're doing here, one of the things we announced is we're, we're really targeting, you know, kind of a, a, a smart grid in the home effort, consumer effort. That's, that's why we're here today. 
And you know, the investments we're making are startup companies, you know, and I'm convinced that the GE brand, the GE distribution in the home, we could have three times the products we have today. We don't have to own them all, and they're gonna come from small business. So we try to make it, you know, use the technology of the internet to make it easier for people to access the company. So you'll need triple the exhibit size for next year? <laughs> Based on what I've seen so far, you don't need. You, know, you, you, seem, to do, you seem to be doing okay. But, GE you know. is always welcome. You know, it, it's funny. We we always be selling. <laughs> it is interesting, regardless of industry, how companies that are successful are similar in their patterns. Uh, Jeff talked about technology in his answer. I'm going to talk about what he alluded to earlier. It starts with culture at the top. Does the CEO, she or he, create an environment for open communications within the organization? But open communications, planting a thousand seeds, you get a weed field. You've got to have processes behind it to really drive it through. So the way to interface to Cisco is we have groups where we have touch points. We do the Global Prize Awards. We're offering 10,000 people participating from 135 countries. There are others where we look at acquiring companies. We probably look at 100 companies for each one we acquire. We have a process behind that. But the ability as you approach any point in Cisco is to be able to have your elevator speech tight. Do you understand what is different about your organization? Are you catching a market transition on it? Have you got good, smart people around you? And do you understand how to communicate your ideas? And we miss a lot of good ideas because we don't miss them well, but that is kind of the rules of thumb and we have different touch points throughout. I also love to be sold, so every once in a while I've got to admit at the show somebody, I get probably 100 opportunities where people try. Uh, but I usually come up with a card too that says, this is a company we ought to look at closer, or let us open the door. But that's a culture thing also. Watching out for each other. It's what Silicon Valley does remarkably well. There's an attitude that you help the next generation of companies. It's almost in the DNA. And I think it's in the DNA of most successful companies. I would say, not as easy as it should be, because as we also I mean, we're big and all over the place. And not. So we try to make it local. Really interesting, and I, Jeff said it, and John said it. If you try to come to me with all the great ideas, then I assure you, you will lose 99 cents. So the, the making it local, empowering, um, and making it the responsibility of the business leaders that I have around the world to find great, around, around the core, that we, for us as business process companies, small IT or startups are really uh, good things for us. And anyone who is on um, marketing or making images more beautiful, these types of places, my people around the world, people who work for Xerox around the world, look for these. So speaking to only Ursula Burns and sending me the, the, um, the proposal, we'll probably get it smashed pretty quickly because that's what happens on brainless. But I have 130,000 people around the world who should be able to listen better than the one name. So all of the points that, that Jeff said and that John said that Cisco do and GE do, in addition to making, it sure, making sure that people feel free to actually come forward with ideas, not not only to me, but to everyone else. You know, Gary, every good CEO that I've met, and John Burstler are there, they, you know, they're good listeners, but they're hands-on. They, they, they know how their own company works, they know how it doesn't work. And, and I, you get in trouble with when you don't have that check on the pulse. I would encourage <laughs> all of you, you know, all of you are in there, run your own businesses and things like that. I always tell the story about a year ago, I was in uh, Ghana, and I was having a round table with our sales force, and a, and a beautiful young guy describing to me a big power generation deal he was working on. And I sat there and said, this guy doesn't have one prayer of getting this done inside the company. So I spent the next day or week or month just with this one guy figuring out how to do that one deal inside our own bureaucracy. I, I love stuff like that. <coughs> you know, in other words, it, it makes me depressed a little bit, you know? to say we're not better or faster, but unless you're willing to go down and fix the pipes inside your own company, you're not a very good CEO, really. And, and I think whether you're a small company or a big company, you can never lose that fingertip of what is the, what is the energy sales rep in Ghana? What is he really confronting? And, and, the, and therefore, that also gives you a sense of what the small company or the small businessman really has to do to access your own company. You talked earlier about examples and what business both here in the U.S. and around the world probably need to do a better job of telling a similar war story. When I, I came from White Laboratories, where most brilliant leader I've ever met in my life, Dr. Wang, 
ran the company for 35 years, we missed a transition, we, we fell from grace. Mm -hmm. No one's there today. And when I came out of Silicon Valley, nobody knew who Cisco was. And I went to HP. We only had 400 people in the company when I joined it. And I asked the CEO there, I said, teach me about Silicon Valley. His name was Luke Pratt. And for two years, he met with me every quarter, taught me about the valley, taught me about the approach. He started bringing his leaders. He allowed me to bring mine. Finally, we were on a roll. And I didn't ask him why he did it before, because I was worried he had stopped. At the end of the two years, I said, why did you do this? And he said, the Silicon Valley way. And I said, I'm now in a position where I can help HP. What can I give you back? He said, do it for the next generation. And it is the right thing to do as business. That's what's good about American business. Do we help others have a chance? Do we use it both? And when you do this, your company gets better. But do you build that into the DNA of your teams where they do this with others? And companies like to do business with companies that they trust and like. And so it's not just the right thing to do. It's really good for business as well. Boy, I, I feel, unfortunately, our time is, is over at this point, but I want to thank each of you, uh, Ursula, uh, John, um, and Jeffrey. It's, uh, this has been like a phenomenal 100,000 foot level MBA course insight that I wish everyone in America could hear because we have phenomenal corporate leadership, not only you, but your colleagues as well. And we are doing a lot of things right as a nation, and we do need to tweak, and we do have a great future ahead of us as long as we make that inflection work. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please join me in thanking this phenomenal panel.